cathedral crypts are mysterious places, full of atmosphere and evoking powerful echoes of the past. St Mary's Cathedral Crypt is no exception. And as well as providing the final resting place for Sydney's Catholic Archbishops and its pioneer priests, including the founder of the cathedral, John Joseph Terry, it is home to one of the city's finest artworks. A spectacular mosaic masterpiece extending along the entire length of the crypt beneath the cathedral. It's 670 square metres and takes the shape of a huge Celtic cross. The design is based on one of the most famous ancient illuminated manuscripts, the Book of Kells. These abstract designs, based on the 1,200-year-old manuscript of the Gospels, which was made in the monasteries of Iona in Scotland and Kells in Ireland, provide the framework for the two main themes depicted on the mosaic floor within the cross. The Six Days of Creation, and the titles of Mary. I was fortunate on our visit to St Mary's to be shown around by one of its first volunteer guides, Dame Monica Gallagher. We started our journey at the head of the cross and the first large medallion, the first day of creation, let there be light. A young Italian immigrant, Peter Malocco, made these marble and glass mosaics. He came to Australia in 1908, age 26, a fully trained mosaic and terrazzo craftsman eager to apply his art, especially in the service of this inspiring cathedral. The crypt of St Mary's finds a significance in many of its attributes. That it is a tomb for all the archbishops from the early days of the colony until the present day, and also for its founding priests, provides us with an enriched sense of our past. That it is a magnificent space invites special performances of drama and music. It is seemingly isolated, far from everyday cares and pressures. Its intimacy lends itself to moving ceremonies, which might be dwarfed in the larger magnificence of the cathedral above, over our heads. It was here that the people of Sydney paid their last respects to Professor Fred Hollows before his final interment in Burke in New South Wales. Catholic Communications in Sydney chose this space for novelist Thomas Keneally to launch the audio version of Commonwealth for the Common Good, the first in its audio cassette series. Everyone who comes to visit this crypt for whatever reason, has a chance to experience not only the serenity, the special moments of reflection and the pools of contemplation, but also the extraordinary beauty and colour of the mosaics. And I want to ask you, Dame Monica, what you thought of Peter Molocco's art. He, do you think the art came first or his faith? Is well, probably I'd say as he arrived here in 1908, only 26, and he was schooled in marble and terrazzo, and the first job he got was here at St Mary's, and that was upstairs the altar of the Irish Saints. And um, he w it was very successful, and from then on he went to one to another to another work in the cathedral, and really at the end of his life he was coming around here supervising the work in his wheelchair. He had a tremendous love for St Mary's, and he had grown a lot in himself, and I'd say in his faith uh, through it. And I think that it, this certainly has been a labour of love, and he wanted to beautify the cathedral, and he had plans. All here, we've got lovely ceiling and uh, so on. Uh, it was part of his plan, he was going to decorate that as well. Dame Monica, we haven't been able to inspect every mosaic in detail. Mm. If people want to see more and come to the Crypt of St Mary's themselves, what do they do? on a Sunday at 12 o'clock there is an organised tour and one of the priests will uh, bring you around, explain some things upstairs and then come down here into the crypt. Otherwise you have to find the cathedral office. It's double two double o four double o. That's easy isn't it? And uh, then they can uh, come and we do like taking people around the cathedral and showing them.